morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have come together to worship God in spirit and truth. Please stand, and together let us lift up our prayer to God with all our hearts. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we exalt your holy name. There is no one like you, O Lord. Your design for all of nature and life is awesome. The reality of the things physical and of things spiritual is beyond human comprehension. Your just ways bring order. Your truth brings peace. Your love and faithfulness endures forever. You save us from sin and sanctify us from living. Your goodness is what we seek. We worship and adore you. Be with us in our worship and accept the praises of your people. Accept also the confession of our sins, for we know we have grieved your Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Lord, as we acknowledge them one by one before your holy presence. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ to pay the price for our sins and to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Thank you for your forgiveness and peace and purifying us from all unrighteousness. All glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh 
Please stand. Let us read responsibly 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. May the Lord bless us in the reading and understanding of these words. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. ago, we rejoiced at the successful board exams of our brother in Christ, Randall Kulanding, who is one of the overseers of the Il Chardino Satellite Congregation, who is now a licensed civil engineer. Praise the Lord. And while this was going on, Almost simultaneously with that good news was the hospitalization of our sister, Loida Dominguez, also a member of Il Giardino, who suffered a fracture of her left thigh bone. She is one of the now seven cases of fractures. In the last seven months that have come to my attention, members, relatives of members, friends of members, for which we are praying. Now, this is a classic example of the reality of suffering and successes happening and um, that we face one after the other or even simultaneously in this world of ours. But for today, I'd like to focus on the reality of suffering in our world, which I know we have first-hand experience in, even in our smaller community as such as the church fellowship, even in our families. Injuries, physical and mental illnesses, terrorism, and the ravages of war, violence, poverty, work or school-related stresses that cause a lot of suffering abound together with family and household conflicts. And so all of these things cause suffering and pain. How about suffering for the sake of Christ? Have you ever experienced that? What does God's Word teach us about this condition of suffering so that in gaining understanding we may know how to avoid, if it can be avoided, if we should avoid, how we can overcome and be comforted in order to be able to comfort others who are suffering. In the midst of widespread suffering, great and small, the question that is often asked is, where is God in suffering? There is also a misleading notion among even some Christians that think or believe that faith in God or being a Christian means you will be immune or, isol or insulated from suffering. And that sometimes suffering is God's punishment for the sinful. Many asked, what have I done, Lord, to deserve this pain? Immediately, we recall what Isaiah the prophet declares in Isaiah 53, a very important 
chapter of Isaiah, which I hope you have read and you continue to read, also known as the forbidden chapter for the Jews, about Jesus Christ. And I quote verse 3 that says, He, referring to Christ, was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Precisely today, we remember Christ's ultimate suffering, sacrifice for us, the offering of his life on the cross. But not until he was flogged and scourged, mocked and reviled, tortured physically, mentally, and emotionally, and left to endure such ravages under the scorching sea, heat of the summer sun. Naalala tuloy natin tayo sa mga matataas na heat index ngayon na para bang hindi na tayo maaaring mabuhay sa init ng panahon. Let us remember Jesus Christ. And what did Jesus do to deserve such pain and suffering? Now there are some causes of our suffering that the Bible informs us and that we know from experience. One, sin. The Bible says sin entered the world through one man and death came to all. And that the acts of the sinful nature cause people to bite and devour each other, eventually destroy each other. Not to say destroy oneself even, or first of all. And so going back to the suffering of Jesus prophesied by Isaiah, this gives us the theological principle of suffering. In verse 4, it says, He, referring to the Messiah Jesus, took up our pain and bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions, literally demonstrated in his nail-pierced hands and feet on the cross. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The suffering that we ought to suffer as part of the justice of God was endured by Jesus Christ. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ and submit our lives to his Lordship, that eternal suffering, that punishment, physically as well as spiritually, are removed from us because he has paid the price for our sins. But those who continue to reject God and violate his commands perpetuate all kinds of evil and cause suffering in others. So we know that in the bigger scheme, in the eternal scheme of things, the punishment and the suffering that accompanies that punishment for sin has been laid upon Jesus Christ. Na pag-iisip-isip tuloy natin ngayon na maaaring itong ating mga pinagdadaanan na paghihirap dahil sa ating kasalanan, dahil tayo ay nagkakasala pa, dahil tayo ay mga Kristiyano na, dahil dito pa tayo sa ating katawan, sa laman, at sa isang mundo na puno ng kasamaan. Itong mga pinagdaranan sa, dina, pinagdaranasan natin o pinagdadaanan natin ay wala sa katiting ng kung ano ang dapat na maging resulta ng ating mga kasalanan. Second cause of suffering is the principle of sowing and reaping. Kung ano ang itinanim ng tao, iyon din ang aanihin. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 8 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. For example, 
Those who want to please the temporary pleasures of the body through prohibited dangerous drugs will eventually reap the destructive effects of drug addiction. Kung ano ang iyong itinanim, ayun din ang iyong aanihin. Those who invest time and effort to study their lessons well, who invest time and effort to do their work well, will reap good grades or at least better grades than if they don't study. The commendation of their supervisors if they are doing well. Those who invest time and effort to study the Word of God will receive God's wisdom and power to live self-controlled and godly lives. Third cause of suffering is unknown to us. In the Old Testament, the book of Job takes us to his journey of extreme suffering despite being blameless and upright. Why did he suffer? The opening verses tell us that it was a matter that was discussed in a spiritual level between God and Satan. So that is a graphic presentation or way of saying that it, 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 was, it was some kind of a conversation in the realm, in that realm which was not known to Job, not known to his friends, not known to his wife, not known to the people around him in his life. May mga bagay na hindi na talaga natin alam kung bakit. In the New Testament times, there was a man who was born blind. If you remember that encounter of Jesus with this man, and the disciples asked Jesus whether it was the sin of his parents or his own sin that caused him to suffer his visual impairment. Jesus said, neither of those was the, was the cause of his blindness. But, Jesus said, this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Of course, at first, the people didn't know what that meant. But further on, we read that Jesus healed this man and that this resulted in the whole of Jerusalem being stirred by the miracle. The blind man became a believer, a follower of Jesus. The miracle became a sign about who Jesus was, and it was a take-off point for Jesus' proclamation of the gospel. The Father and I are one. Many believe Jesus because of that. But we do not know why it had to take the blindness of a man since birth for this, for the glory of God to be revealed. May mga bagay na hindi na natin so this brings us to the beneficial purposes of suffering. Obviously, suffering in itself is something that we would rather not go through. It is painful, stressful, and in, and in extreme cases may be the stage before death itself. As when somebody suffers from a certain illness or injury. But just as Jesus said, suffering is redemptive. In other words, suffering can have beneficial effects and may in fact be the key to God's purposes being accomplished. What are some of the beneficial purposes of suffering? First of all, for Christians, the benefits of suffering are not Merely an afterthought. Hindi ito para bang pampalubag loob lang or consolation. Or a way of looking positively at an otherwise negative situation. These are not merely the silver lining behind the clouds. But it is a way of doing, accomplishing God's greater purposes. 
the purposes of a purposeful and loving God. When Jesus encountered the man born blind, he responded with compassion and he healed the man. In fact, we read in the Bible that whenever Jesus met with the suffering sick, the suffering hungry, the suffering repentant sinners, ridden with guilt and shame, he had compassion on them. And he healed them, he fed them, forgave their sins according to their faith and according to his will and his discernment of the situation. He did not heal all the sick. And um, one of the principles that we know from the Bible is that he did not heal the sick in that particular village because they did not have faith. Which doesn't also mean that all those who are not healed are without faith. Okay? So, marami po ang mga sitwasyon at mga bagay-bagay na nakapalibot sa mga pangyayari sa buhay. Hindi tayo maaaring gumawa kaagad ng conclusion. And so, Jesus demonstrated the glory of the compassionate heart of God for the suffering of people. And so for one, the beneficial purpose of suffering is for people to know God and draw closer to Him. It's true. Based on my experience and most probably also based on yours that somehow there is something about suffering that makes us know God more in a way that we can never know or experience in times of pleasure and success. To know God and draw closer to Him, to know that God comforts His people. James reminds us in the book, in chapter 4, that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. And so, in the midst of suffering, we get to know God's comfort and grace. Jesus said, come to me, all you. In other words, all you, believers as well as unbelievers yet who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Get to know me. Get closer to me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, those who are comfortable tend to be proud thinking they do not need God because they are self-sufficient and doing well. There is no need for someone else to help them. That is for the moment until time of suffering comes knocking at the door. But those who are suffering, those who have known suffering, know that they need a greater power from a greater being. They know that they are in need of help. The Apostle Paul was a brilliant mind and he had physical endurance. Uh, kung hindi ba naman malakas at talagang matiisin si Paul sa lahat ng mga pinagdaanan niya, di ba? Lahat ng kumalaban sa kanya. And in fact, he was beaten and even believed to have been already dead. Diba? Eh, nabuhay pa. No? So, talagang matibay si, si Apostle Paul. He made great exploits for God in the mission field. But, he spoke of a thorn in the flesh. That's what he called something that caused him suffering. And so, he prayed to God to take it away. And he remembers he prayed thrice. But according to to Paul, God, God's reply was, 
my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And so we understand God's power more and in a personal basis when we face some form of weakness and we learn of Him. We become more teachable when we are humble. And we are humbled when we suffer. As Paul said, his suffering was allowed by God to remain, to continue, to be left alone. Why? In order to keep him from being conceited. Another beneficial purpose of suffering is to glorify God. When we endure with grace, people will see the greatness of God's Spirit working in us. Our healing, eventually, and the overcoming spirit that is in us will testify to the victory of Jesus. Yung mga tao, kapag nakikita na matatag ka, matyaga ka pa, mabait ka pa rin, masunurin ka pa rin sa Panginoon, sa kabila ng inyong pinagdaraanan, hindi ba nagtataka at glory to God? And when we are healed, when we see especially miraculous healing taking place, then God is glorified. Today, I also got the good news that one of those seven cases I mentioned to you about the fracture, particularly, actually, it is, uh, this is um, Giselle or Giselle, uh, Gamutia, who is the daughter of one of our members, and she's here now, si Ate Zosipa, no? um, Abol, did not have to undergo surgery. Praise be to God. She was, she was healed. No? Uh, praise God. The bones turned out to be, well, they, they aligned themselves. So there's, according to the orthopedic surgeon, there is no more need for any surgery, and all she has to do is to exercise that foot. Praise be to God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Kaya uuwi na si Ate Sosima. Uh, papunta balik sa kanila probinsya and she doesn't have to stay that long. Praise be to God. And we say, thank you, Lord. And all of these are because of the greatness of a God who is able to heal us. Amen. So glory to God. Another, another beneficial purpose of God is to learn compassion for others as God is compassionate to us. Um, remember that story, that account of the paralyzed man who was brought to Jesus by his four friends. And he had to be brought down from the roof of the house because the crowd was just so thick they couldn't get through where Jesus was. And so we will see that because of this suffering of this man, then we learn to have to be compassionate also to others. The four friends showed their compassion. That suffering person, that man who was healed, who first was paralyzed but was healed, he experienced the pain and the suffering, but he also saw the compassion of God through his compassionate friends. Alam niyo minsan, kapag um, tayo ay hanggat hindi tayo ang nagkakasakit, hindi natin alam kung gano'ng kahira ang pinagdaranasan ng ating mga pinagdadasan. And um, that's the only time, sometimes, when really the full um, impact of the suffering of that person comes to us. And so our scripture reading says here that our Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, allows this so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Number four, 
God's purpose for suffering is to wean us from the world and make us long for eternity with God. Huwag masyadong komportable dito sa mundong ito kasi baka hindi na natin magustuhan pumunta sa langit. Amen? No? Makalimutan na natin na meron pang mas, mas glorious doon at ayaw na natin pakawalan yung ating hold of the material things in life. As Paul said, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. You see, um, as the Bible says, our ancestors, the heroes of faith, were looking to a more glorious, the more, a more glorious kingdom whose architect is God. Number five, the beneficial purpose of our suffering is so that we may experience unity with Christ. And um, Paul reminds us in Romans 8 that if we are children of God, then we are co-heirs with Christ. We are co-heirs if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. When we say that we have already been made one with Christ, that means to say that we take the experience that he had with suffering as well as the glory. Hindi pwede tayo makipag-isa kay Kristo, nakipag-isa na tayo kay Kristo, pero pagdating sa paghihirap, ay ating itong pinagreklamuhan. And so, knowing all of this, what should be our attitude towards suffering? How should suffering transform our minds and attitudes? First, we should respond in faith. Knowing this, these are just but a few of what we learn from the principles of the Bible regarding suffering. Then, our attitude should be one of faith. We must learn how to theologically assess the situation that we are in. We know that God is in control and God is compassionate. Every time we are suffering, the Bible tells us we do not have a high priest who does not sympathize with us, but he sympathizes with us because he was in every way tempted to, and he suffered. Tandaan po natin yan sa ating mga pinagdadaanan. Huwag na huwag nating iisipin na ang Diyos ay walang pakiramdam. Second, our response should be that of coming closer to God. Because it is God's will that we come to Him and that we grow in Him. As Jesus said, it is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, fruit that will last. Thirdly, our attitude to suffering should be one that is willing to endure. Sabi nga, Tayo mga Kristiyano, totoo, we know that things, there is a lot of victory in store for us. But while God is not yet finished with His purpose for the suffering, we are supposed to know how to endure suffering. And so the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Kaya natin magtiis. You know, uh, because of the advances in technology, of course, uh, we try to mitigate, we try to lessen the pain. No? We, and there are, this is good. Praise the Lord. We are able to avoid unnecessary suffering. But if we think theologically, despite everything that we have done, we still are, we find ourselves in a condition of suffering, then God must be talking to us in a special way. He is saying, you need a dose of suffering. 
These are the times when we must not try to avoid it at all costs. Minsan, hindi natin na, hindi tayo talaga mapupunta doon sa pan, sa punto ng buhay natin na magsasawa tayo sa ating pagiging matigas ang ulo kung hindi tayo bumabagsak. When we we suffer the pain and the shame. I had a classmate in college who had a sister who was taking BS statistics and her older sister and um, she thought she was great in math until she failed one of her math subjects the first time she ever failed in math what a, what a great shame for her for herself for her family who expected her to excel in all her math subjects but do you know that because of that failure, because of the suffering, of course, of the shame and, of course, the consequences, she couldn't get to the next course because that was a um, prerequisite. Because of that, she learned how to endure that suffering and then she learned how to overcome. She put all her energy to studying she embraced her destiny, her purpose as someone who would be a, a professional in that field. And finally, she became uh, an excellent actuary, actuarian, heading one of the big insurance companies in the United States and became the inspiration of my classmate to take up the same course. Kailangan natin minsan a makadaan doon sa punto na talagang wala na tayong mapupuntahan. Saka pa tayo natututo. But praise God for those who are able to learn. And um, in teaching his spiritual son, the Apostle Paul told Timothy, keep your head in all situations. That includes all situations in success and suffering. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. And when we say hardship, that has, of course, the concomitant pain and suffering. Of course, he was talking about doing the work of an evangelist, discharging all the duties of your ministry. And so whatever be your work, your profession, your station in life, your ministry at this time, do it. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Endure hardship. And as you do that, keep your head in all situations. In other words, have that right perspective, especially as Christians. Have that Christian, theological, biblical perspective about what you are going through. And finally, learn from God and make the most of every opportunity to help others. Since suffering is a cleansing and as well as a um, learning experience and process, then we might as well make the most of that experience while we are there. Not only for ourselves, but perhaps we can tell ourselves, Siguro, Kaya ako nagdadaan dito. Gusto ng Panginoon na ako ay maging isang pagpapala sa iba. Na maaring makita kong nagdulusa din at naghihirap sa kanilang sitwasyon. Sometimes we even become blessings and a comfort to others even while we are suffering ourselves. You know, it becomes beneficial not only to the people we are able to help but even for ourselves. When we fix our eyes, or when we try to focus not so much on what we're going through, but also become more concerned and compassionate with what others are going through, you know, it works wonders. Then we forget about our own pain. We, we are able to carry the burden. And in that way, we are really carrying each other's burdens. We share. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we come to the communion table to remember God's great love as shown by the suffering that our Lord Jesus Christ endured. 
for our sake, for the glory of God. May we be comforted by the glorious purposes of God so that suffering should not destroy us, but that overcome them all. We may overcome this suffering by the grace and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus Christ, who gives us the grace and power through his Holy Spirit, is our greatest example and hope of the kind of suffering and comforting the ministry of being a comfort to others that leads to victory for the glory of God. Let us pray. Lord, help us to receive your words, Lord, with gladness. Give us teachable hearts. Give us the faith to believe not only in the greatness of the wisdom of your word, the re but the reasonableness and the logic of the understanding, for the understanding of suffering. And also because we have the experience to back up what is in your word? Oh Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters as they go through various kinds of suffering and trials, temptations and pains. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for your promise Thank you, O oh Lord God, for your truth. Thank you for your principles. Thank you for the precepts. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit who is in us. O oh Lord, thank you also for reminding us of the greater glory that is to come if we but persevere and learn how to endure in obedience and with wisdom from above. Thank you, O God, for reminding us that you are a God of compassion and comfort. You are a God who is concerned for every person. Lord, give us that, give us that kind of heart and spirit that we may be able to exude joy, that we may be a source of peace and hope. For others who may be undergoing even greater sufferings than we are undergoing right now. Thank you, Lord, for how you have been with us, how you have taught us, how you have healed us, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, how you have healed our families, how you have healed our church because of and through our sufferings. Lord, I pray that as we face them, we will, we will commit them all to you, that they may do the beneficial purposes that you have sent them our way. Thank you, Lord, also for the faith that believes that these sufferings are light and momentary, and that as we continue to pray, your relief, your answer, your goodness, your glory will come. 
Father, we pray for all those who are suffering in the world right now. Those who are suffering in their minds, those who are suffering in the family, all kinds of suffering, abuses, torture, violence. Those who are in the prison cells, those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the streets without any homes, those who are in palaces and castles and yet they are suffering the condemnation of sin, they do not know Christ. Those who are suffering in war-torn countries right now, the innocent children, men, elderly men and women, those who are victims of injustice and abuses, those who are suffering for the sake of Christ in the mission fields. Lord, you are sovereign. Indeed, you are a God who sees, and you are a God who has compassion. You are working out your good purposes. You will heal, you will redeem, you will save. Thank you, Lord. We pray that we will be truly people of compassion and that we may be a source of comfort to one another. And even a source of victory, a channel of blessing, a channel of your gospel, wherever you send us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue to be, to reflect upon our message today as we sing this song while we are seated. Let's sing this song together. His strength is perfect. Perfect, perfect, 
His goodness and love, God has given us the opportunity to offer the best to Him. Let us give our offerings with faith, with hope, and with love. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may we submit to your word that it may grow deep in our hearts. As we desire to follow you every step of the way, cause us to receive and experience the glorious destiny that you have prepared in advance for those who love you. 
set apart these gifts we offer you, that they may continuously serve your kingdom purposes. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the celebration of the Holy Communion and let us sing our song of preparation together. Thanksgiving to God, we remember the great sacrifice and suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation. On the night that he was betrayed, when he was at supper with his disciples, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body broken for you. Take and eat and when you do, remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God. He offered the cup to his disciples and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of you and remember me. Shall we pray? Dearest Lord, we do remember you, Lord, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Thank you, Lord, for your word that reminds us that you have shown the greatest example of the greatness and the purpose of suffering if we but keep our eyes on our Lord God. Father, we pray that you will bless these symbols that we are about to partake of and bless each one of us as we come forward that this act that we are repeating and that we are doing in obedience to you, O oh God, will serve its physical and spiritual purposes in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Go and live your lives in the comfort and in the joy of your Master Jesus Christ. Amen. those who would like to present themselves to the Lord for special prayer concerns, those who need special prayers, I ask you, I, I encourage you to come forward and we will pray together as a body of Christ for those concerns. You may come forward. So let us pray. All the rest who are in their seats, will you please stand and pray with me? Father of compassion, God of comfort, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ with faith in our hearts. A faith that has come to this point in our lives because we have heard the good news. We have listened and we have experienced the truth of your words. We come in the name of Jesus because we believe that our faith in him and our willingness to be submitted to his teachings and to, the, to his lordship over our lives is the key to our understanding you and being able to receive and grasp the breadth, the height, the depth of your love and the strength of your power working in us through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for these, my brothers and sisters, your children who have come forward. I pray for those who are undergoing suffering at this point in time, those who are ill, those who have relatives and friends and loved ones whom they want to intercede for, those who are weak, those who are in need of your wisdom, those who are suffering because of stresses in life, those who need your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, O oh Lord, for the sins that so easily entangle them. Those who are about to undertake great responsibilities. Those who are going to travel far and need your protection, your care, and your safety as they travel. Father, those who are looking forward, O oh Lord, to greater things, who have taken on new responsibilities, added responsibilities in their lives. Those who are undergoing certain deaths of mind and heart and spirit, even after successes, those who do not even understand what they are going through right now, those who are in doubt because of their fears for the future. Lord, I leave them all up to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your invitation to all of us to come and see that you are good, that the Lord is good. Lord, I pray that through the varying seasons of their lives, 
they will get to know you more and draw closer to you because indeed you are the God of salvation. You are the God of our peace. You are the God who is able to do immeasurably much more than what we can ask for or even imagine. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that you will be with us through this journey, through the ups and downs, through the pains and the gains. But all in all, O oh God, we know that we are walking in step with your Holy Spirit. Hold their hands, O oh Lord. Hold their bodies, hold their minds, hold their hearts. And Father, I pray that as they go out of this place, as they say amen to this prayer, they will receive your joy. They will receive your confidence, not because of their own strength, but because a great God is holding them, holding their lives, holding their future, even holding their present. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let us sing our song of commitment. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. The same he us here in the brain. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, remember that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into his marvelous and glorious light. To the praise, honor, and glory of the one true God, the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit and all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.